to you, a given war was either lost or won by a particular side. In your skimpy comprehension of events, there can only be one definite outcome of a battle, for instance. There will be certain hard facts. A fight with so many people involved, occurring on a particular day at a given place, culminating in a definite victory. Historically, there will be treaties signed, yet in far greater terms, you are perceiving but one small dimension, or one corner, of a much larger happening that quite transcends your ideas of the times or places involved. The initial battle, so to speak, took place on a dream level. Then privately and en masse, the race decided which portions of the event to actualize in physical terms. Even in those recognized terms, however, it is quite apparent that the victor is often the loser. The entire event transcends any true or false judgments. An entire event, with all of its probabilities included, obviously cannot fit within your current frame of reference. Again, in your dreams you work with probabilities and decide which ones will become your physical quote-unquote true facts. Here you have great freedom, both individually and as a race. Here each man works out his own destiny, and with the use of this dream information, quite consciously chooses which episodes he will physically materialize and experience. You will accept from your dreams that information that largely agrees with your waking conscious beliefs. There is interaction, as mentioned previously, in which new beliefs are tried out, so to speak. In that regard, you are not at the mercy of your dreams in any meaning of the word. You have not understood the great give-and-take that exists between waking and dream experience. You have been taught to believe in the existence of an artificial barrier between the two that does not, in fact, exist. By suggesting before sleep that solutions to problems be given you, you automatically begin to utilize your dream knowledge to a greater extent and to open the doors to your own greater creativity. Currently, Mankind has little knowledge of the interior dream world, his place in it, or its effects upon his daily conscious life. Many of the most powerful aspects of consciousness are at work precisely when it seems to you that you are relatively unconscious and asleep to physical reality. It would be impossible for you to handle the vast amount of material available in the context of time as you presently experience it. To operate adequately in your highly specific field, an almost infinite amount of information must be instantly assimilated, probabilities calculated, and certain balances maintained of which you are not even aware. Latently, your consciousness is capable of performing these feats, but the work cannot be done with the part of your consciousness that is strongly attached to the space-time relationship. What you think of as your conscious mind is given the task of assessing the quote-unquote facts of daily living. It then forms beliefs about reality, and these are used in the dream state as one of the many yardsticks, so to speak, that activate the emergence of certain probable events rather than others. You use your beliefs like searchlights in the dream state, looking for other events that fit in with your ideas about reality. Your convictions help you sift out probable actions appearing as dreams, of course, from others that do not concern you. Since you are not only a physically focused creature, however, other issues also operate. You have within yourself the condensed knowledge of your entire being. This information cannot appear in any complete fashion within a consciousness connected with a physical brain. The multidimensional reality simply cannot be expressed. In the dreaming state, when consciousness relates opaquely to physical concerns, Glimpses of this multidimensional self can appear in dream imagery and fantasies that will symbolically express your greater existence. If your conscious beliefs are causing you great distress, countering beneficial beliefs may be received from this source. Your being, the greater consciousness that is yourself, intersects with space and time. It is born in flesh simultaneously at many quote-unquote points. You would call each of these immersions into three-dimensional existence a life with its own self, and you are one of these. Each self must experience itself in temporal terms, but every self is also a part of its own greater being, a part of the energy from which it continually comes. In dreams, 
your energy pulsates back toward the being that you are. In a manner of speaking, you travel back and forth each night through atmospheres and entry points of which you are not aware. In your sleep, you do indeed travel. Again, those vast distances between birth and death. Your consciousness as you think of it transcends these leaps and holds its own sense of continuity. All of this has to do with pulsations of energy and consciousness, and in one way what you think of as your life is the apparent quote-unquote length of a light ray seen from another perspective. Beneath the dreams that you recall are experiences of consciousness that appear only now and then and in distorted form. These express in non-physical terms your relationship with your own being. Here you are regenerated, and you are quite free of any conscious beliefs. From this level, individual and mass ideals are formed. This activity goes on beneath ordinary dreaming. To a far lesser extent, it goes on all the time, for it represents the basis upon which your present consciousness rides. The physical reality into which you are born is not nearly as solid or predetermined or definite as it appears to be. Instead, there is a field of rich interaction. Your consciousness must be focused at one particular range of frequencies before it can even perceive matter, much less solidity. In sleep, your consciousness fluctuates between ranges of intensities, literally flowing into and out of the physical matter grouping and forming from more plastic quote-unquote pre-matter stages the final shape that matter will take in your world. The same applies to events, where some will be crystallized in physical terms and others will not. The deep portions of your own being are aware of those purposes and intents that are uniquely yours. Unconsciously, then, you have within you what you might think of as a set of blueprints for the particular kind of physical reality you want to materialize. You are the architect. A system of checks and balances exists, however, so that in certain dreams you are made aware of these blueprints. They may appear throughout your lifetime as recurring dreams of a certain nature, dreams of illumination, and even if you do not remember them, you will awaken with your purposes strengthened or suddenly clear. When you are working with your beliefs, find out what you really think about the dream condition, for if you trust it, it can become an even more important ally because of your conscious cooperation. If you want to clear up an argument, tell yourself that you will do so in the dream state. There, you can speak freely to those who may avoid you otherwise. Many reconciliations take place at that level. Request the answer to any problem, and it will be given, but you must trust yourself and learn to interpret your own dreams. There is no other way to do this except by beginning yourself and working with your own dreams, for this will awaken your intuitive abilities and give you the knowledge that you need. Your belief in the value of dreams can, therefore, increase their practical effectiveness. End of chapter.